Okay. So uh, today we are starting a new chapter and this is known as chapter 19, which is called statement of cash flows, right? So as promised, we had to do this in this week and we'll try to do uh, this chapter and it's exam kit questions as well, hopefully. And uh, then remaining classes will just be left with, I think, one or two topics, then that will manage hopefully in the next classes. Okay. So this uh, is- Which are those ones, sorry? Because I was thinking if they are just, you know, theory, mm -hmm. uh, you can send me like, you know, re 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 recorded lessons, like, you know, the ones that you've done with the capital structure, because yeah, if sure. it is, you mm -hmm. know, it's going to be like easy, it's not, if it doesn't involve, you know, any calculation. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, let me actually show you which chapters are left just as yeah. I can share my screen. One second, let's go in the index and let's see which of them are left. So right now, um, out of these ones, so basically what are we left with? Interpretation is done, cash flows is done, incomplete records done. Yeah, so basically we are just left with one, yeah, just one topic and that is chapter two. Yeah, surely okay. so. Okay, can you send that to me? Yeah, so you know, I will, I will listen to this lesson and then, so you know, from Friday we can actually, you know, just focus on the, on the exam kits sure sure yeah yeah why not so uh, most probably from friday i'll be doing the ppp kit and i'll confirm about the days in just uh, one or two days right yeah because but i think i need a lot of help for the control account with the reconciliation and for the suspense account sure sure i'll keep the extra classes uh, hopefully on this weekend uh, that is coming and we'll keep the extra classes on the doubts don't worry yeah okay. i'm going to try you know and I mean, on uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday mm -hmm. to basically, you know, revise because for yeah. now I have reached the suspense accounts chapter. Okay, right, right. Uh, so, you know, the ones that have left, I mean, are all the statements and I'm, I, yeah. I want to, you know, to do everything by Sunday, even if it is like a bit. Right, right, right. Got it, got it. Got it. But, you know, I just need to do them because I don't have any more mm -hmm. time. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Sure. So we'll keep uh, the extra classes on whichever doubts you're having. Don't worry, and I'll confirm the days about them. Okay, in future classes. Okay. Okay. So let's start with today's uh, chapter then, and this is uh, we can say theoretically our last chapter, right? And only chapter two will be left. So technically, it's the last live class of the whole syllabus today. Okay. So this is uh, chapter nineteen. It's called the statement of cash flows, right? And uh, this chapter is, I don't think, very much confusing to understand. Uh, it's very easy to understand. And uh, in this, what happens is that uh, first, I'll explain you what is the need of cash flows. Okay, right. By uh, by cash flows, we mean which thing and why do we actually need to make this statement? Because other statements, we know that they're important, like the profit or loss, financial position, all of these. But this cash flow has a very uh, special, uh, you can say, special place in financial accounting. Okay, the so first, let's mm -hmm. read. Uh, there is a separate three or four paragraphs. And this is, uh, in fact, very important. This may be asked to you in the uh, MCQs as well. And this is basically the need of cash flows. Okay. So it's a very interesting one. So what happens is let's read from here. Whilst a business entity might be profitable, this does not mean it will be able to survive. To achieve this, a business entity needs cash to be able to pay its debts. If a business entity could not pay its debt, it would become insolvent and could not continue to operate. So what's it's trying to say over here is that basically there are two different things in the accounting world, right? One is called cash and the other one is called profit. And these both mm -hmm. cannot be merged together ever, right? In, in the whole universe, these cannot be merged because these are completely separate things. There's a lot of difference between them, right? So this chapter focuses on basically uh, converting the student's mindset because till now we have studied everything according to accruals concept. Right. Accruals concept was basically everything related to profit, right? Like expenses affecting profit. Everything is affecting profit. We studied incomplete records. We studied the capital chapter, receivable, payable. Everything was at last affecting the profit. And we have spent a lot of time on the statement of profit or loss as well. Right. So this chapter is basically shifting the mindset of students for just a while from profit to cash because it needs, because accountants need to understand that cash is the more important thing that needs to be considered, not profit, because profit is actually not cash. 
we will be reading in the next paragraph that what are the reasons let me give you some introduction like there are many kind of non cash expenses that are, that are included in the profit or loss statement right like let's say uh, de depreciation amortization these two are the main examples right we actually are not paying depreciation right from our pocket any physical cash is not going out it's just reducing the assets value on just paper right and uh, similarly you have seen in the other comprehensive income we write the revaluation re reserve as well again it's kind of a non cash activity and if we consider this as part of the consolidation as well the profit uh, the unrealized profit if you remember the urp right so that's also part of a non cash expense okay now the main reason for this problem is that profit is not the same as cash flow yes undoubtedly that's correct so profits are calculated using the accruals basis this the basis that we have you know currently studying till now uh, for the whole chapters for every chapter most goods and services are sold on credit so that at the point of sale revenue is recognized but no cash is received right so this was the example of receivables right that everything is sold on credit that also affects the profit not the cash the same can be said of purchases made on credit there are also a number of expenses that are recognized as a non cash impact right like depreciation amortization the examples i have already given to you therefore it is possible for a business entity to be profitable but have insufficient cash available to pay its supplier yes that is correct this happens in practical life as well let's say a profit uh, let's say profit of one company is $100000 and let's say the cash of the same company is in minus it's in overdraft it's you know drenching in loans we can say in bank loans in, in debts right and let's say it is minus 1000 so it does not have cash but in turn it has to pay back cash to people that it has took loans from right and profit position is showing very nice it is 100000 right so we don't merge these together in fact we say that profit gives us a really uh, we can say wrong figure right it's not to the point but cash is more to the point because cash is actually that matters right profit we can say it's just giving us a deceiving figure it's just deceiving us okay now for this reason it is important that users of financial statements can assess the cash position of a business entity at the end of the year but also how cash has been generated and used by the business entity during the accounting period okay so what happens is that if i am investing in a business if you are investing in a business if any user is you know uh considering and investing in a business he will see the cash position not the profit position yes profit will be important it determines the profitability it's used in the ratios that we studied in the last chapter but cash i would say is the more important thing because if cash is there in one business, yes, it can handle its interest charges, everything, dividends will be paid, interest will be paid on time, payables will be paid on time, right? It will avoid all the troubles, troublemakers, right? But profit actually does not always provide, you know, accurate information. Okay, okay. so this was the introduction. Okay, just one moment. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm just making notes. Yeah, sure, sure. Take your time. No issue. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, let's proceed. Let's look at the next things over here. So again, this mm -hmm. is a long kind of example. Already the examples I've given you, it's written over here, right? I don't okay. think there's any need to read this. Now, this is uh, basically the standard of this uh, chapter, which is the cash flows is IS7. It's not important to learn the standards, just for knowledge you can remember. Um, just like we studied IS2 inventory, IS16 uh, non current assets, right? So IS7 is called uh, statement of cash flows. So objective of IS7 are to ensure that business entities report their cash generation and cash absorption for a period by highlighting the significant components of cash flow. So we will be studying the cash flow uh, format in just a while, right? And provide information that assists the assessment of their liquidity, solvency, and financial adaptability. So basically cash is focusing on these three things, liquidity, solvency, and financial 
adaptability because if we will have you know certain amount of cash to cover the future expenses or the interest payments everything then we will be called a liquid company because liquidity i explained to you in the last class it's basically called that how quickly uh, companies can convert their assets into liabilities uh, pay off their liabilities from the quickly converting assets right so it means the same the most quickly converting thing in the current assets is cash right inventory also takes time receivables also take some days so the only option available is cash that's why cash position for a business is very important over here okay right now uh, we are coming straight on to the format over here let's first read the drawbacks as well uh, benefits and drawbacks let's first read the uh, benefits of this of the cash flows so first is liquidity and solvency an adequate cash position is essential in the short term both to ensure the survival of the business entity and to ensure debts and dividends to be paid obviously we need to pay off the interest payments as well and if we are financed by capital we need to pay the shareholders dividends on time as well so that we can regain their confidence so that they're you know not uh, you know they're not uh, desperate enough to share the sell their shares right if we we want to make the customers and shareholders happy right not sad now financial adaptability will the business entity be able to take effective action to alter its cash flows in response to any unexpected events yeah so this is also a very important thing financial adapt adaptability means that if any unforeseen situation happens if any unforeseen circumstances happen like a quickly a, a quick court case or any customer suing us right so we need cash for that as well right profits will not matter even if we have like 5 million dollars of profit once we don't have physical cash it doesn't matter over here right future cash flows are also important because this you might have studied in management accounting as well that budgets need to be prepared and the thing the triple c that we studied in the last class uh, cash conversion cycle so cash is important from that aspect as well okay so these are the benefits now the drawbacks there are some drawbacks as well uh, the statement of cash flow uses historic cash flows right and users of accounts are particularly interested in the future so if i am investing in the company i will have to see that yes past will matter to me somewhat but mostly i'll be considering that how will company perform after i invest in that in that company right and after i invest that means future right what happens after today so prospectively not res retrospectively so this cash flow considers only historic cash flows because on, again we make the cash flows on, on the basis of last 12 months so no interpretation of the cash flows yes so there, this is one drawback uh, users are required to draw their own conclusion because we cannot uh, we studied interpretation chapters as well so there are you know unfortunately no ratios for this uh, cash flows that we can use we just have to assess from our own knowledge right and obviously non cash transactions also play some important part in some cases so they are not included here so obviously we have to exclude the effect of them in this statement Okay, so these were the drawbacks, very simple theoretical things, no, nothing special to understand over here. Now we're moving to the main part of this chapter, and this is the format of the statement of cash flows. Okay, so first of all, uh, I would like if you want to, you know, draw this uh, uh, format, you can take your time, no issue. I'll zoom this out a bit, right? So this is the whole format till here, right? it's ending over here so if you make this first that will be beneficial and after that i'll continue to explain this yes i will do that yeah sure
Sorry, can you scroll down? Okay, sure. So these one or two or three lines are left. You can write them. Yes. Okay, done. Okay, uh, that's great. Let's continue. So, have you done writing all this? Yes. Okay. Great. So, uh, let me first explain you uh, the format, what it actually contains, and why it contains this. Yeah. So, over here, you can see that there are three heads over here, three main heads, and we have to include the we have to include the cash flow from each of these three heads. The first head is over here, as you can see, it's called operating activities. Operating activities means that whatever is happening within the company, right? like on a day to day basis on a weekly basis, the cash that is generated from these activities, it's, it's written over here. Okay. Now, second thing you can see over here, cash flow from investing activities, right? Investing activities means uh, we invest in many kinds of things, right? In a business, like for example, we invest in new non-current assets. We invest in new companies as well. We invest in new shares, right? And we also receive dividends from them as well, right? So everything relating to the investment part is written over here from cash flows from operate uh, investing activities okay now the last one the third head over here you can see cash flows from financing activities because in this what happens is that uh, financing basically means that company needs cash to operate right so where it will get cash either from loans either from shares right you remember asset is equal to capital plus liabilities so either it can get from uh, issuing shares either it can get cash from uh, taking obtaining loans right so mm -hmm. everything relating to that comes over here as well first let's discuss uh, these uh, independent things over here and after that i'll come to this topic after i'm done with explaining whole of this uh, statement this uh, topic cash generated from operations it's written c note below so we will be seeing the note that's written below right and uh, this has a small uh, kind of calculation as well that i will uh, give you some time to write that as well okay so for, once we write the cash generated from operations now these two are some students what they do is that they do mistake over here that they combine these two things they think that they are the same and what do they think that cash flow from operating activities this head which is actually the heading over here and this part cash generated from operations because both of the things contain the operate operations word right operating activities operations so they combine these together and they just ignore this part Right. And that is actually wrong over here. So what we have to do is that we have to remember that this is a separate part, which comes under the heading of operating activities. And this itself is the heading that I've written in brackets. Okay. So we'll see the note of this below as well. It contains some minor things. It, there is a calculation just like we had a calculation for cost of sales. If you remember, right now, after yeah. that, we write interest paid, right? So everything obviously, which is going out of the business is being written on minus side. Right. And anything which is being received, any money which is being received is being written as a positive balance. Right. Now, interest paid is being paid. Right. And interest is paid uh, depending on the operations of the business. If the operations are more, the interest will be paid more because it is, you know, we can say related to loans. It is required for operations. If you don't have um, access to uh, loans, then we cannot operate the company. Right. So that's why it's included in operating activities. After that, we've got over here income taxes paid. Obviously, for operating smoothly, 
for the company we need to pay uh, taxes on time as well right so this also gets these two things gets minus over here okay this is related to operating activities now there is nothing such as debit or credit over here these two columns are just given for you know clear presentation just to make it nice in front of the investor right so you can see the, once we total all these amounts the three they uh, the total are, uh, is written over here and this is called net cash flow from operating activities why is it called net because obviously we are netting off some items over here right so it can come as a minus as well and as a positive amount as well okay this was operating activities similarly in investing you can see we have three or four things first of all what do we invest we obviously as a company we invest in non current assets we purchase new machine car buildings everything right so purchase of property plant and equipment this is the first thing which is which was basically is 16 it's written as a minus over here because cash is going out right for purchasing these proceeds of sale of equipment so this is also relating to investment investing right because if we are purchasing non grant assets we will sell them as well at point, some point of time right in future so the cash is coming in because of this that's why it is written as a positive balance right then after that you can see interest received right so interest received is basically let's say we have invested and put our balance some of the balance in some bank right in let's say a savings bank so we will be receiving some interest on that as well right let's say let's say monthly or six monthly or e e on a yearly basis so interest received is also related to investing over here and dividends received as well because some companies also invest in other companies shares as well right uh, it can be part of consolidation as well but over here dividends are only received if it is treated as a simple investment let's say i bought yeah. uh, six or seven, right a very small amount yeah, yeah, yeah. i will be receiving dividends that's why it is uh, written over here as a positive amount so same we net uh, net them over here and it's called net cash flow from investing activities right so two of the heads are done operating and investing now the last one is called financing right cash flow from financing activities in financing financing means basically needing cash right needing cash to operate so cash can be obtained through two things debt and equity right so proceeds of issue of shares so whenever we are you know issuing shares we issue share and in return what we take is cash right from shareholders so that's why this is written as a plus because we are receiving uh, cash over here okay now receipts of new loans obviously if we are receiving loans as well it depends some companies take loans some companies take both of the things some companies only issue shares right so this is also part of financing because in loans we are also receiving cash right after that repayment of loans so repayment now means that this is also relating to financing right because at some point in time we have to return that loan as well after five years after six years when the loan has reached the maturity stage right so that's why it is written as a negative amount because we are paying the cash back it's going out of our business and dividends yeah. paid as well because this is also relating to financing because in loans what we do we pay interest right and in uh, issuing shares what we do we pay dividends right now you might be wondering that interest paid why did we write interest paid in financing why did we write it in operating because you know interest is directly linked to operating right some companies have no choice they don't have uh, you know let's take an example they are not even listed in a, in the stock exchange market because it cost a lot to be listed over there right all the fee all the broker fee everything so obviously uh, every small company will not be able to afford that much kind of expenses so that's why interest uh, they they rely on loans mostly so if they're relying on loans obviously they will need interest for daily uh, daily basis operations that is being happened in the company so that's why these amounts are written over here okay so finally we have financing activities net cash flow right and uh, it's written as a plus or minus both things can come over here now what is the meaning of these last three things net increase or decrease in cash and cash equivalents so this word you can see over here cash and cash equivalents this is a very interesting one because cash you know what is cash right so this yeah. word is cash and the word cash equivalent the second word over here it basically means that anything equal to cash let's say like stock exchange uh let's say like bonds right like uh, we have government bonds as well that can be converted into cash anytime right let's say any kind of uh, you have seen like a bank check as well that can be transformed into cash uh, at any time so any kind of these things like government bond gilt bonds right 
these are called cash equivalents right but there is not much detail in this right we just have to understand what this means okay so what happens is that how is this answer coming over here we net off all these three amounts the operating the investing the financing we net off all these three and the final answer we get after summing these all up these three we get this one which can be a net increase as well and decrease because at, at the end of the day you think this is the movement right the operating one the investing one financing it's not like opening balance closing balance it's the overall movement right in the last 12 months because again the word used over here is for the period ended right at the top over here so again it's the movement between the 12 months what gone out what has you know being received in the company so that's why the movement is written over here now the opening and closing balance stuff comes over here so in this net increase or decrease which is the movement what we do is that we add cash and cash equivalents at beginning of period we write the opening uh, opening balance over here okay what we had at the start okay yeah yeah exactly this is the opening balance let me write right and after that the closing balance we've got over here because obviously when we add the movement in the opening balance we get the closing balance right but let's say uh, let's say the bank opening balance was 100 right and let's say the movement the plus minus cash in and out cash in and out let's say it is 1000 in a positive balance that means net cash inflow was of 1000 right so what will be the uh, closing balance if we add these both together we will get the closing balance which will be of, of 1100 so this is the exact concept the exact principle over here okay right so this was basically the whole explanation for uh, the statement of cash flows over here. Okay.